Anima Talks is an initiative for sharing knowledge between students, staff and management of the Nordic and Baltic Academies for Higher Music Education and anyone else interested. Welcome to this 11th edition, presented in collaboration with Musik, Anima Talks Quality Enhancement in Higher Music Education, Need a Critical Friend. Good morning everyone and welcome to this 11th session of the Anima Talks events. I'm, my name is Camilla. Uh, and I'm the project coordinator of Anma Talks. And for those of you who may not have joined our talks before, you're very welcome to do so in the future. You'll find them on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And also you can follow our Facebook page. And as you'll see, this session is recorded. As Ola said, we are doing it in a way so that if you do not want to be on the recording, that's completely up to you. That's why Ola and I are spotlighted now. So you won't appear unless you ask to, or of course, if you ask a question, then your voice will be on the recording. If you're not comfortable with that, you're welcome to just write your questions in the chat and Ola and I will, uh, will put them into the talk. And uh, just very briefly, Anma Talks, we're exploring uh, collaborations between the Nordic and Baltic academies, but we're also very happy to extend as far and wide as possible. It's all about sharing knowledge and making each other better at what we do. And this is also very much at the center of the talk today. So that was just a brief welcome from me. Back to you, Ola. Thank you so much, Camilla, for that. Uh, and uh, colleagues, just a very few words before we go to our esteemed presenters this morning um, about music and what it is that music does. Now, I know a, a number of you have already uh, some experience with music, but some of our colleagues in the call this morning may not. So in an overview, music works uh, internationally to uphold and kind of advance the quality of music education. Um, and what are, I suppose, some things that are very important to us uh, in the organization is to is the fact that we are fundamentally an organization that was set up by the music education sector, really uh, to make quality enhancement processes in music education more uh, connected and more more specific to what music organizations need in order to quality enhance. Um, and so we have a number of founding organizations and that we work in partnership with the Association of European Conservatoires, EMU, EAS and Pearl, of course, um, as well as other stakeholders uh, in, in music education um, and it operates in Europe but also beyond uh, so we try to incorporate as many of the international perspectives about quality enhancement as possible. Um, so the, the organization really tries to help music institutions reflect on their own practice um, and to uh, engage in quality enhancement uh, as part of their quality assurance procedures so that really there is improvement as, as, as we move forward. And the critical friend process that we're going to talk about this morning is one of a number of different things that music does. It's not the only thing. Um, obviously, there's uh, the standard review processes that, uh, that we do, um, but we have a large pool of uh, peer reviewers, and that's one of the great benefits of, of the organization. People like ourselves from all over Europe who are uh, experienced in many, many different aspects um, and delivery and, and specialties, really, within, within music education delivery. Um, and we've, I suppose at this point, uh, reviewed well over... 50 different uh, particular review processes. We work with institutions directly, but we also work with uh, international um, quality assurance agencies uh, at national level um, in partnership too. So um, it's supposed to be as collaborative as a process as possible. And this is why I think the, the critical friend aspect of what music does will be uh, hopefully interesting to you this morning, um, because that really is a, a um, a, a very collaborative process from one music educator to another. And I will leave it to our panelists to explore this um, in more detail because they uh, will be much better able to do so than I. Um, so first of all, what I would like to do is move to introduce Martin Prahl. Um, and uh, Martin and also Eva van Ingen are going to talk a little bit about the actual process of a critical friend review. Um, Martin will speak to the structure of it and, and Eva will give a perspective of, of the student's perspective uh, and experience of this critical friend review process. So without further ado, Martin, I might hand it over to you. 
Thank you, Orla, and good morning, dear friends. A lot of people, uh, dear old friends, new friends, and people, new people I see in the session. Wonderful to see you all this morning. Um, uh, I'm going to share a slide uh, uh, show with you. Um, I'm just going to try if it is going to work. So let's see. Um, is anything happening? Yes, yes, we can see this. All right. How is this? Good? Very good. OK. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the critical friend review system that we have here at Royal Conservatoire in The Hague. Um, just to tell you, who are these two people spoken, speaking to you this morning? Incidentally, we're both cellists, which I think <laughs> is a very nice thing. Um, I'm vice principal at Royal Conservatoire um, uh, here, and then Eva is a bachelor student at Baroque Cello, and she's going to tell you a little bit about uh, perspective uh, from, uh, from a student. Exactly. Is All it? Right. All right, so next one. Good. <laughs> All right, so uh, just, sorry about that. Uh, pick up the th thread of my talk then. Um, what we are doing here is to kind of maybe challenging the, the what we would call the classic review model. Uh, I mean, we all know this, this review model that is very well known in different countries. Um, you have a panel that comes every so now and then, uh, five, six years, sometimes seven, sometimes even more. Um, and you know you how you kind of prepare for this visit. There needs to be all kinds of reports being made. Everybody gets very stressed. Um, uh, you have um, the panel coming, and then in the best situations, they come up with very good uh, recommendations, which is helpful. But sometimes also they leave, and then everybody just goes back to where it was. So uh, what we were looking for was a kind of an approach that was a little bit more permanent, and it would also and make a couple of differences. So uh, first of all, um, we really wanted to talk about the content. So a shift from you know quality assurance, assurance speak, as I, as I call it here, really very heavily kind of um, influenced by all the things that we talk about in quality assurance to what we really find important, and that's the quality of the content. Then uh, we all know our qualitative and quantitative quality assurance tools. So you know the surveys, the questionnaires, all the things that we do. We found after working with those surveys and questionnaires that it had these limitations. And we were really looking for other uh, tools, uh, more qualitative tools that would kind of engage people in speaking to each other about quality issues. We were also looking for a shift from quality control to quality enhancement. We don't like systems that tick boxes, that really only check certain standards to see uh, if it's there. We really want systems that help institutions to improve. Because we tend to say that if you have quality enhancement, there is going to be quality control anyway. But if you only have quality control, you don't necessarily have quality enhancement. So this shift from uh, a, strongly, a system strongly based on quality control to a system based on quality enhancement, that's an important shift. And then, of course, we all know also in our institutions, at least, you know, I, I think some or most of us, that there can be sometimes resistance to these quality assurance systems. From our teachers, for our from our students, they say, "Why are we doing this? Uh, you know, this culture—it's all this bureaucracy. Why do we need this? And we know what our quality is anyway. So, 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 why all this quality assurance? How do we shift from these kind of skeptical um, opinions to a more uh, engaged um, uh, approach? So, let's go on. This is a very short kind of uh, explanation, and, and maybe many of you will already know, but this is something that is also very basic to, the, to all the principles of, of music, um, is that we have this principle of quality that combines artistic standards with educational quality. And this is very important also in this approach to critical friends, because they, as I will explain later on, they will come by themselves, which means that you need people that are both uh, at home with uh, being able to see what's going artistically and also in terms of educationally. So in terms of the, the, the curriculum, the management, all the things that are very important for a conservator to run, to combine these with a deep knowledge of what music is about and what artistic standards really are. So this is something uh, very important to keep in mind. So let's move on. So just uh, this idea of uh, increasing the management of students and teachers. And I'm very happy that Eva is with us because she can tell us her, her own uh, uh, student perspective about that. What we found is it's very important to be sensitive to disciplinary diversity. So we don't like that much uh, the approaches that are taking kind of broad approach to, for example, a program that 
that is covering many different uh, departments or genres, we really would like to focus much more and go much more deeply into the content of the, um, uh, of the education. It also means that you need to speak the same language. And this is why it's very important that these critical friends, that they're musicians, that we understand each other when we talk about quality and that we know what we're really talking about. So basically what we need are quality assurance tools that make sense to students and teachers and that help them to engage with quality issues in a positive way. So how is this working then? It means that we have critical friends coming at department level. As I will show you in a minute, we are organized according to departments. And these critical friends, they come into the department. So for example, we have in our audience today, Gustav Jups Um Hi Gustav, good morning. Uh, and he was our first uh, critical friend for our classical music department. But then we also had a critical friend for jazz, we had a critical friend for early music, for, for sonology, for composition. They really come into the department, they come, they come to visit the department, they speak to teachers, to, to students, they visit classes, they sit on examinations, they see concerts, performances, they really go very deeply into the department for a couple of days, and at the end of this period they write up a report. This report then is sent to the department and the department needs to write a response to this report with a kind of an action plan on how they're gonna be dealing with the um, uh, uh, recommendations from the critical friend. And then they need to start working with, these, uh, with this action plan. After three years, the critical friend comes back to see what has been done with his or her recommendations. Uh, so actually there is a kind of a continuous self evaluation reporting uh, uh, system going on and not just you know only uh, once every six or seven years but it's very continuous and the and the departments they are really um, activated to take care of their enhancement process throughout those those years so this goes on in the different departments and then at the end every six years there is a there is a panel that comes which is a kind of a uh, you know, as, as the kind of a classic review uh, approach, and that oversees the entire system. They are then informed by what the critical, critical friends have done, and they oversee the, the, the review as a, as a whole. So they are very well informed about all the information that the critical friends have collected and also the recommendation, recommendations that they have made. So basically what it means is critical friends coming at different moments throughout the years, twice over a period of six years, and then once every six years, there's a panel coming to oversee the entire process. Here, just to kind of show you how we are organized, as you can see, um, uh, we have a you know, directorate, then we have the different programs, and the different programs, they are covered by a number of institutions that you see at the, at the lower part of the slide. So we have classic music, early music, jazz, and vocal studies. This is important to mention. So we have chosen for, to invite critical friends in those areas of those departments. But you could also have uh, a critical friend in more horizontal themes, for example, governance or management or quality assurance or internationalization. This is really up to the institution to choose and see what is to their benefit to have the, 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 the critical friend approach. We have chosen to really go deeply into the content of our education. So this is why we choose for these critical friends in the different disciplines. This is now you'll have to keep pushing the button, Camilla, all the time. Okay, so keep going. We have this we have this um, policy that we call our lemniscate of continuous improvement, and you see two uh, ways of internal and external quality assurance. Here, what you, what you see appearing now is the internal one. So we have all these tools that we use for our internal uh, internal uh, collection of feedback, student panels, surveys, employee surveys. You know all these things that we all tend to do. But then if you keep pushing, Camilla, then you also have the external one. Um, and this is, for example, the critical friends, but also alumni surveys, but also professional stakeholders meeting. International benchmarking is also another one. And what we want to see is that those internal and external perceptions are all linked together into one ever, uh, uh, um, never ending, let me so put it this way, never ending system of continuous improvement. So if you keep, pushing the button, Camilla, then you can see the, how it works. Um, it's all internal feedback, yes, then external feedback, and then it all comes together in this lemniscate of continuous improvement. So it's a, it's a, it's a continuous process, and the, uh, the critical friend approach is part of this. 
This means that there's also a connection between, for example, the critical friend approach and the student panels, which is an internal uh, 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 way of, of looking at quality insurance. And Eva is going to explain a little bit about that a bit more in a, in a minute. Okay, let's continue. This is just to inform you about how we have set it up. Maybe you can't read it well, but as you can see um, on the, the column on the left-hand side, you see the departments, then um, horizontally see the years, and you can see where in which year every critical friend visits the department. If we then keep pushing the buttons, yeah. Uh, in preparation of each visit of the critical friend, we have a semester evaluation that we kind of, that we provide. So we provide the, 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 the critical friend with some information that has been gathered from the students. We also organize student panels. Please keep pushing. There we go. So there's a, always when a critical friend comes, uh, a student panel is also, also organized. And then when uh, in those years that the two critical friends are not coming, we organize professional stakeholders meetings. So there's a kind of continuous schedule of activities that gives us really um, a lot of information about how we are doing. Then benefits. Um, what we really like about the critical friends is that they really speak the language of students and teachers. So they are really finding a way to, um, to, to meet and to speak about the quality in the department, the quality of the, of the education. This is very much appreciated by the students and the teachers. As I said, both aspects of the quality, the concept of quality are addressed. So both the artistic issues and the educational quality. It's very strongly focused on quality enhancement because the experts, they can really give very qualified recommendations in the field they're expert in. So this is very helpful to the, to the department and also to the students and the teachers in this department. As I said, because it's kind of evenly divided over the years, the quality assurance workload is very continuous. It's evenly divided. It's not that you know, every six years, everybody suddenly wakes up very, very busy, very stressed, and you have to organize everything at that, at that moment. No, it, this is really something much more continuous. And I wouldn't say it's less work, but it is, because it's evenly divided, it may be perceived as being less work. Um, it has a positive dynamic of ownership. So what we have seen uh, in various departments that they're really much more actively engaging with uh, quality, quality issues, that they find it very important to engage with the, in the discussion with the critical friend, and that they find it very important to follow up also the recommendations. And there's a sense of pride in the department to show what they can do and then also work on the, um, uh, the improvements that are suggested by the critical friend. And then one other thing I would like to, to mention also that we have made this a, a kind of connection to our internationalization strategy. What we say is that we can uh, best to show our quality and how we are doing by comparing ourselves as much as, as possible to other institutions. So the critical friends that we invite are all international ones. And by doing those, by inviting these people, we also compare ourselves continuously with the situation in other um, institutions. So this is a kind of a way of internationally and continuously benchmarking us, us, uh, us to um, situations in other institutions. So then I now leave the, uh, the floor to Eva and she will be able to share with you a little bit of information on how she perceives the system as a student. Yes, great. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, amazing. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, my experience uh, with the um, visit as a student was, uh, she was really visible. I mean, she was in a lot of classes that I took and also in the student panel meeting uh, that I uh, attended um, uh, with some other students and uh, uh, the head of the department. Um, so, um, and to us, it really, in the beginning, it was a little bit, we had to, I mean, I, I didn't quite know what it enhanced, but she uh, was really approachable. And um, uh, also in the report that I read afterwards, it's really clear that um, a lot of the things that we already as students were talking about or that we um, uh, were uh, wondering about uh, were also, I wrote back or I read back in the report. So that's really great. And um, I'm also in the study program committee, and uh, that means that we're continuously looking at the study programs of the department, and um, we're um, we're having the tools to um, advise on programs and how they work. So, for instance, the international projects and the projects in the school, um, and also study load and. Um, 
it's really uh, great to to have somebody else advice so from an international perspective advice uh, on it and uh, um, yeah give examples and uh, yeah that it really felt like somebody that was equally coming in and giving her opinion about it so that's fantastic Eva thank you for that and thank you also Martin uh, for that very good overview of of uh, the purpose behind the process and the advantages too um, I realize it being Friday morning at the end of the first week that I forgot to introduce our panel. So um, I, I already fired from my position, but that's OK. So obviously we are joining from a lot of different places this morning. Um, Martin um, and Ava are obviously joining us from The Hague. I know many of you will know Martin, uh, who is vice principal at the Royal Conservatory in The Hague, and Ava is studying there as a student as well. So we thank you for joining and opening uh, our 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 time together so well. And I'm going to move next to uh, Linda Mesas, who also uh, many of you will know, who is the director of music. Um, and Linda is going to talk a little bit about the critical friend process in different contexts. So Linda, we'll pass the floor to you. Thank you, Orla. Uh, so I just wanted to, to clarify that uh, the critical friend reviews can be used in several institutional contexts. Uh, whether the institution is uh, independent or part of a larger entity. So if your institution is independent, uh, whether private or public under the tutela of a ministry, culture of education, uh, then the critical friend reviews can be used as part of the formal accreditation procedure. So it will work as Martin explained uh, with two possibilities for the final review by the review team. There's the case in which uh, you have the full freedom to work with music standards only. For example, uh, if your institution holds in, uh, institutional accreditation, then in some countries, you can then self-accredit your own programs. Or uh, if in your country, then any foreign agency that is registered on the European Register of Quality Assurance Agencies, ECAR, as is the case of music, uh, if any of such agencies is allowed to conduct accreditation procedures in your institution, then in that case, um, the review team will use the music standards for its evaluation and its report. The second option, in the category independent institutions is when there are national uh, legal requirements that need to be taken into account. So for example, in the case that Martin presented earlier, uh, there, were, there were national accreditation standards which had to be used for the review uh, of the review team at the, at the end of the cycle of all the critical friend uh, visits. So the regular visits by the critical friends, they still take place as envisioned uh, by music, but the framework for the final review by the review team uh, had to be adjusted to ensure the conformity with the national regulations. So in these cases, music gets in touch with the National Quality Assurance Agency or the ministry and uh, proposes a mapping of the standards. So we map the music standards against uh, the, the national standards and procedures, and we can propose an adjusted framework. So in the case of the Hague, uh, the structure used was the national accreditation standards with references to the music standards. And the review team even had to deliver two reports, one which was aimed at the national agency and another one uh, that was really structured along the music standards. If I move to the second case, if your institution is a faculty or department or an academy within a multidisciplinary higher education institution, uh, more and more in many European countries, the trend is towards external quality assurance procedures at the level of the institution in this case, the university or the polytechnics. And so the departments and faculties, they, they have to explain in the review procedures that are taking place at the level of the university, how uh, their own internal quality assurance processes work at program or department level. And so here we propose the music critical friend review as a model 
uh, for this situation. In this case, the aim of the critical frank review becomes to build and to maintain a robust and continuous internal quality assurance uh, process, uh, which includes a strong external dimension. Then the critical friend review can be used as such with the music standards, unless in, in some cases uh, there might be universities uh, which uh, really impose uh, standards for the internal quality assurance processes, in which cases we can proceed as we do with the national standards and try to, to propose a mapping and to propose a framework that is acceptable for uh, the, the larger entity. Uh, so just to give you an example, at the moment we are working with uh, Antwerp Royal Conservatoire. They're part of the School of Arts of the University of Applied Sciences. They ask to have visits in four fields, orchestral instruments, jazz, non-orchestral instruments and voice, and conducting and composing. And in 2024, uh, a review team will evaluate two programs, Bachelor of Arts in Music and Master of Arts in Music. Uh, and this review will be based entirely on the music standards. <laughs> and finally, I, I wanted to briefly mention, uh, Martin also talked briefly about it, another way of conducting the critical friend review uh, which we will actually pilot in the coming years. Uh, we've been asked by the Malmö Academy of Music to propose a model where the critical friends will be studying transversal areas rather than specific fields of music or departments. And so there will be critical friend focusing on uh, the following four domains, institutional level, institution policies, governance, the second one is educational processes, student perspectives, teachers, external perspectives. The third one is the learning environment, facilities, financial resources, health services, communication. And the final one is the quality assurance with the idea to finish the circle and feedback uh, into the, the governance. And so we also have the, the pleasure to, to have Hans Elston and, and Karin Johansen from Malmö, who can tell us a bit more of, about uh, this later. So that's my contribution. Thank you very much, Linda. That uh, gives us a lot of different ideas as to the diversity of approaches that can be used for, for our processes within Critical Friends. And in fact, since you mentioned Malmo at the end, I think I might, if uh, Hans is okay with this, I might move and just ask uh, Hans, uh, perhaps what was the inspiration, just to start us off in our, in our uh, question and answer piece of today, Perhaps what was the inspiration for using the critical friend process to look at uh, the four domains that Linda has just explained? Well, two things. First, uh, the critical friends uh, process in itself. Uh, mm -hmm. I find it very interesting. It has a conversational nature that, that really, well, improves the possibilities of quality enhancement. I like very much the, this conversational nature of it. Secondly, uh, is that we are going through an organizational and also physical uh, change process the next five years. We are co-localized together with the, uh, the schools of drama and uh, Beaux-Arts, what do you say, visual arts, and um, in, in the, into the harbor, well, in, in, in an old shipyard in the harbor of Malmö. Uh, and this demands really that we create a much simpler organization than the one we have. We have roots back into 1977. So, so there is quite a lot of work to be done there and being accompanied by music and a critical friend process for these four areas is of immense value, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, can, I can empathize with that a little bit, having emerged from 
the last five years of a massive migration project in my own institution in Dublin. And one, I used a slightly different process in music, uh, but the value of the international perspective in the conversations around what mm. was needed and what we were aiming for was incredibly valuable. So thank you for that. Um, I might open just if for the moment, open the questions to the floor and see if there are any particular questions from colleagues on the call. You've heard a lot of, of different information now in, in quite a short amount of time, um, but is there anything that anybody would like to ask or clarify or any thoughts anyone has on what you've heard so far? 